So this Tonga Agronomy project is such a project uh, with a holistic approach we've uh, taken. And uh, this actually four pillar concept component, I got it from a climate uh, smart uh, village concept from CCAPS. And then not only climate information service and climate smart technologies, we try to touch upon agricultural development plan and also local knowledge and institution because we focus on uh, sustainability of this uh, final output of this project. So I will go through all the details uh, with the stories and challenges. So this project uh, had started uh, in 2014 and ended in 2016. And country partners is Tonga MAF, Ministry of Agriculture, and Tonga Met Meteorological Service, TMS. So it goes back to 2014 uh, at the regional consultation on climate service for Pacific small island states, where three important figures actually came. And then during the coffee break, this is important. History always comes takes place during coffee break. So after this one, we have a coffee break. We have to have uh, make a historical event there. So this guy from agriculture in Tonga, he uh, asked me, we need our own agronomy service to help our farmers in Tonga. For this, we got to first rescue our agriculture data, which is in hard copy data format. And then this uh, mad guy, hey, the climate service is my oyster. You can't actually do that without me because I'm from climate. So we can use uh, our weather and climate information to make uh, useful information for our agriculture stakeholders. So I was like, wow, these guys uh, will surely be my biggest supporter, you know, biggest supporter. So why don't we start this uh, project together for Tonga farmers? So let's just do it. So which is actually basically bridging agriculture and climate, which never happened before in Tonga. So to enhance climate service through enhancing data availability, uh, we first uh, focus on agriculture capacity building. In terms of data uh, collection and data management, management of uh, MAF. So using the information from uh, TMS and MAF, we developed a climate service for agriculture, which will increase uh, agricultural resilience to climate change and climate uh, extreme events of uh, agriculture sector. And then in turn, will uh, increase the capacity for TMS for their climate service capacity. So for the first uh, agriculture capacity building, we developed a agriculture database, which is called uh, TAIS. We generate agromet information by installing within uh, agromet station and uh, connecting other existing uh, weather networks. And for the climate service for agriculture, we developed the agro climate services, but uh, we wanted to actually know what to input, what to put into the climate service for agriculture. For that, we, need to, we needed to assess the user's need and capacity. And then based on that, we did the research on core relationship between climate and agriculture. So do you think this story ends a happy ending? Not really, actually. So you never actually had this kind of a boring happy ending story, didn't you? <laughs> so there is always something come up. Like Wicked Witch comes with a bunch of challenges. So he's going to actually do something for this project. So we need to actually deal with the challenges. The first challenge was the climate service should be based on stakeholder driven portfolio. What does it mean? So we did the initial assessment of the current level of climate service for agriculture in the target country, which is Tonga. And through the interviews with the stakeholders, and then we did a stakeholder and a climate service report. And basically we had a climate service for agriculture checklist. And then based on that, we actually know the level of current level of the country's climate service. So we did identify the long list of climate service needs, which is based on the initial assessment we did. And there's some multiple stakeholder workshops, such as an inception workshop. Uh, through there, we had uh, some recommendations and farmers really wanted to be well prepared for next El Nino events because they had a really drought and damage from there. 
And they wanted to have an improved capacity for data management, which is basically from math. And they wanted to have uh, easy access to weather and climate information and wanted to be clear about the limitations of forecast. And also the education, the increased forecast accuracy, something like that. And then the effective control on, on unexpected crop disease and pest outbreaks. And also they wanted to have an improved partnership and communications of climate information. And then also increasing income. And they increased understanding on climate and biological interactions. So they're utilizing that, uh, translate climate information into uh, agricultural relevant information. And sustain the project outcomes and building capacity. So among the long list, we did our cost benefit analysis and urgency based selection. And we had to narrow down the options and finally get into the final climate service portfolio with best option, best outcomes. To select a realistic and practical service options to from uh, among the climate list portfolio, we need to have a further intensive discussions such as uh, with the partners in terms of their uh, operational capacity, whether they can actually operate those uh, climate services developed. And then we also organized the AgroMed working group. They are kind of advisory group for the, this specific project. And then from uh, MAF and TMS, MED service, and then private and public sectors and farmers and all actually uh, figures uh, came together and then gave us uh, really important advice for the progress pro uh, project progress. So through this communication with stakeholders, public and private, and we finally get into this chicken, oh, no, uh, this is final climate service list on the table, but Next challenge was a decision making using the climate service identified should be supported by sound and state of the art science and technology. So for this, we did a thorough simulation model development for fund decision making support. Uh, CSIRO helped us to do this trial and model development. Finally, we developed the uh, EPSIM model and then how to use thorough models, a lot of uh, trainings out of that. And then this, uh, we also assess the uh, value of seasonal climate forecast using this uh, Taro simulation model. Also, we touched upon disease spray model, and which is uh, developed and then validated in the field for disease control. And then especially powdery mildew and then potato lape light or tomato lape light was uh, problematic in Tonga. And then we tried uh, uh, trials and for validation and come up with uh, some uh, promising result. And this year also the MAF is doing the, another round of uh, validation with this uh, specific model using this spe uh, spray protocol with uh, TOXA. And we also developed statistical model for yield prediction with ANSO forecast. So basically we use the uh, agricultural data we collected from using the TIES, the Tonga Agri Agriculture Information Service Database Management System and using those information with the climate data from TMS, we developed statistical models on crop supply and climate. And using the market price and supply data, we did that seasonal market price estimation based on seasonal climate forecast. So basically this black line uh, shows the climatological years of taro price. And you see the monthly taro price, and then the current year actually gives here and this is the uh, based on seasonal climate forecast, and then that gives the range of the change of the price. And this was taken actually last year. So last year was a linear year. No. Sorry. So if you compare that with the linear years, it goes the, you know, uh, takes the similar pattern with the linear years. So using uh, all the results from the R&D activities, we wanted to actually put them into agro-climate uh, service box. And then we developed uh, Tonga Climate Service for Agriculture, which is ICT-based agro-climate service. Uh, Tonga Climate Service for Agriculture stands for, uh, refer, uh, for short, uh, TOXA. TOXA is a weather climate information. 
uh, including historical and forecast information. And then it provides aggregate indexes, which is also seasonal climate forecast basis. And crop yield prediction, and then crop disease spray planners, crop management simulator, which is using a you know, simulation model, and then climate smart farming using traditional knowledge we collected in Tonga. And it also has a data collection and analysis tool called the farm diary. So basically, this climate service for agriculture are in a modular, modular format, which means you can be actually customizable. It is actually customizable. So there is a main uh, component in uh, climate service for agriculture, weather climate service and agronomy service, information delivery and agro data collection and management. Like a um, car. So you have a uh, different kinds of trims, like high end trim and you know, like low end, low end trim. They have a uh, different options. So you can actually choose based on your need and your capacity. But you need to actually make sure that if you go high trim, rock up, it's going to increase the price. So basically we provide a module, so options for each component like this. And for the weather climate service and agronomy service, for each agro mass service has uh, sub uh, modules. So you can select from those uh, modules And information delivery taking place through email and smartphone app based push alarm and mobile phone text messaging interactive by directional information communication. And the aggregate collection has farm diary and extension diary options. So based on the challenge one and two, our well, conclusion is comprehensive assessment of the current level, capacity and capability and multiple intensive uh, selection process for the climate service options resulted in stakeholder-driven portfolio. And sufficient communication was needed with the stakeholders through multiple particip participatory meetings, which actually assured their ownership for the final output. That was a really important point. And process-based statistical agriculture model development accompanied with a participatory field and desk validation which actually gave enough confidence to users in utilizing those information for their decision making because they were there in the field for the validation. And champion farmers now, they are actually doing the trials uh, such as intercropping and different planting dates using the uh, exact crop simulation model we developed. And also market supply and price estimation that I just showed using climate information. And also weather index based insurance are the, become now the priority of MAF strategic plan for climate resilience. So they're actually seeking for internal and external fund from, for that. So next challenge was improving agro data management capacity and then establishing data oriented guideline for sustainable data management in MAF. So you can see this hard copy data. So most of our past agro data in a form of hard copy, as you can see here, in the recent data, mostly electronic file, but you know what, the, um, they are you know, frequently missing because as uh, steps actually rotate their department, they actually lost their uh, hard copy things. So there was actually no guideline for data management in math. So, okay, then uh, how are we gonna make the database management system math? So we did a lot of brainstorming and that's why my brain is storming. And then we scanned a lot of uh, the hard copy data, essential data to electronic files and put them into ties. So this is the final uh, uh, outcome from this uh, database, based, uh, database management system. So we actually developed uh, this uh, really nice um, state-of-the-art state, state uh, technology-based uh, database management system. But that was actually, uh, we expect them to use it because it's nice. And this is a really ICT-based uh, tool for them. But the result is was like this. Nobody actually used it. And then they returned to their original way of making data management. So we realized we have to do something. We have to step in to change their way of uh, thinking and way of uh, data management. And that's why we did a lot of training for uh, you know, database management system. And then we had the meetings to explain the importance of DB management system. And then finally, we got to the point 
to meet high officials like ministers. So through there, we had to convince them how important the database management system and why need, we need the standardized and mainstream collection and use of long-term quality controlled agriculture data. So we uh, explained our big data analysis like statistical power. If you have more data, you have a more statistical power. And then you can use those data for agriculture model development and planning, also extension materials. Can be basis for national agriculture policy development, definitely. And then it could be essential for climate change adaptation because it reflects the, and also the current level of data management reflect the current knowledge level of the ministry and then it has limitless potential for future works. Finally, the ministry uh, has established guideline for data management system. So the steps have no choice but to participate and do the data management using the ties. And we had a lot of uh, multiple training for ties. And the guideline recently extended to a new task on agricultural data collection and management in MAF. So basically, this is uh, using Extension Diary. Extension Diary is a ICT extension tool for collecting and analyzing and visualizing the agri agricultural data. So Extension Diary is utilized not only for the annual crop survey they are actually doing once a year, but also for regular, like a weekly and monthly or seasonally crop surveys by extension workers or farmers. So they are collecting several data, data including GIS information. And the extension diary consists of two components. One is a mobile device application for applying data collection. So without internet connection, they can actually bring the mobile device to the field and collect data. And then once they are under Wi-Fi, they can actually unload all the data into desktop. So this desktop analysis and GIS-based visualization using web-based extension data management system. So basically, you can see the uh, using you can visualize all the data on the map, national uh, wise uh, statistics, and the commercial farmers also joined the agri, agro data collection in their farm management. So this they actually use the farm diary, which has a similar concept, uh, mobile device application for plain data collection, and then if you just uh, click this link and all the data goes to this TOXA and they can do a desktop analysis and management tool on TOXA. But what is the benefit they are using this one? So basically the final benefit will be some export uh, commercial farmers, they can use this one as export compliance document uh, required for target country specific regulation. So all they have to do is just print it out and then use it for their compliance document. So I will, Conclusion on challenge three was Tonga Agriculture Information System is now on official uh, DB management system in MAF. It is now mandated to upload market survey, export and import, and regular reports such as annual crop survey and FAO census, etc., into ties. And MAF is going to collect monthly agro data uh, focusing on major crop, cash crop, and staple crops using the extension diary based on their internal data management guideline. And champion uh, commercial farmers are using farm diary now. And also local NGO, they stepped in and they are planning to develop their own extension diary to use the, uh, in a community level data collection for baseline and for the digest impact assessment. So next challenge was reaching out as many end users as possible up to community level. So for this one, we had a limitation because we, our first uh, primary target was uh, extension and commercial farmers or champion farmers. So we had to have a collaboration with the local NGOs and champion farmers. And then uh, through that collaboration, we could reach out up to 122 villages with TOXA to provide essential weather and climate information. And it could be uh, used as one of the community level adaptation strategies to climate change. So in order to convince farmers, we had to have uh, applied climate education. So through the education, we uh, did, uh, they could actually understand the probabilistic nature of uh, the forecast and reliability and limitation of current uh, climate forecast forecasted by TMS. And then they could understand the potential benefit of using climate forecast in crop management. We used the crop simulation model to show them and so when you use the forecast, current level of forecast, 
still you get the higher yield or uh, comparable yield with the irrigated state farming. And then for, through there, we could identify together decision point in farming activities using climate information. And we could learn why we need a quality agro data and how to utilize those available data. And these uh, country specific local context based uh, climate change impact results were presented for their uh, understanding. And in order to reach uh, various end users, various level of end users, we used uh, various ways of uh, information dissemination. So web-based mobile comparable system, uh, is, which is TOXA, they could actually get access to TOXA. And regular agromed advisory emails sending to them monthly, and TV and radio advertisement, and agromed advisory handout, and push alarm via you know, mobile device application. Sometimes we need to have a face-to-face -face, uh, training and for, and we uh, developed uh, uh, education material for farmer field school. And communication materials, Distributed, and this one is the uh, Tonga Agromet Project leaflet. If you need, if you are interested in this one, you can actually come to me after this one, so I can. I have uh, several of them. So reaching out in order to reach out as many end users as possible. So now more farmers and extension workers know about uh, Toxa because you know of all the effort we did. And they are going to, they are actually getting weather and climate information through TOXA. And this is ongoing process because uh, more collaboration and follow projects are realized now. And additional information and features identified in the climate service portfolio should be added through continuous updates. And, and also more, as more users understand the climate service for agriculture through education opportunities, uh, I think uh, more end users in the community can be reached out. The last challenge was uh, mainstreaming the climate service for agriculture to increase long-term sustainability. For this one, we had a handover operational agreement for TICE and TOXA with the government. And then we had a joint agreement for agromet station, agromet data uh, management. And then we also contributed uh, the uh, Tonga agriculture sector plan uh, through the agromet working group established from uh, this project. We. Uh, uh, emphasize the climate service for agriculture was suggested as a major adaptation plan to climate change and variability in Tonga. And then this is the letters from uh, acknowledging TOXA as a means, a main means for climate service for agriculture, both uh, ministries. And there are projects implementing major components in TOXA uh, are on the way, which is uh, important for sustainability because after ending this project in 2016, if we don't do anything, uh, I mean, nobody actually guarantee about the sustainability. So we had to actually make connection with other ongoing and follow-up project. And we established another one, Tonga Agri, Agri Water Project by APCC, uh, which is basically using groundwater for uh, agriculture irrigation. And then ADB Climate Resilience Sector Project. Through that, uh, TMS is going to install dense uh, AW network over Tonga, and it can be connect, it will be connected with TOXA to provide location-specific climate service for farmers, community. And it could be a reference station for the preparation of weather index-based insurance as a further uh, risk management options. The next one was FAO-led uh, agriculture and rural statistics project. And through that project, statistics strategy will define essential agriculture data. And based on that uh, information, uh, MAF is going to collect uh, more uh, focused uh, agro-data collection. And IFAD uh, Tonga Rural Innovation Project, through there, uh, we could reach up to uh, community levels. Uh, farmer Field School use TOXA as a means for climate information delivery and educational material for Tonga rural communities. And there's a baseline community data collected and managed using the extension diary on TOXA. And also we uh, had for intensive training for TOXA users and system operators. And uh, you can see several of our responses from them. And when you ask, uh, do you think the TOXA is useful or helpful to your farming or extension works? And then we got some uh, positive uh, response from each uh, stakeholders. So for, in order to mainstream the climate service for agriculture to increase long-term sustainability, and we needed to have an official agreement with the Tonga government uh, and then TOXA is now like a, 
realization of the major climate change adaptation plan in the TASP, Tonga Agriculture Sector Plan. And TASP states active use of climate information for coping with climate uh, variability and extreme. And connecting TOXA with the follow-up and existing product projects ensures continuous use of TOXA and thus periodic uh, updates of the system leading to sustainable and viable service for Tongan stakeholders. And continuous training exports of TOXA to users is needed uh, for positive influence to users and their committed operation. So lesson learned. So five challenges. Climate service should be based on stakeholder-driven portfolio. And decision makings using the climate service should be supported by sound and state-of-the-art science and technology. Improving agro data management capacity can be realized with the establishment of necessary guidelines, government guidelines for sustainable data management. And we had to find the best way to reach out as many as users as possible and mainstream the climate service for agriculture increase long-term sustainability. And finally, we have to have fun. Okay, so this is TOXA, and you can see without, with just one uh, climate information service components, you are not gonna get, you know, beautiful tree. We need to have a holistic approach to come up with uh, the sustainable and uh, some kind of actionable uh, outcomes from this project.